Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. If it is your first time here, then hi, my name is Roisin. I'm so glad that you clicked in this video. My channel name is Rose Keats. Roisin is the Irish version of Rose, but Rose is much easier to spell, so hence the channel name. Today I am doing my first update that I have posted for you of my 2024 project pan. However, it's actually, you're getting two for one, basically. So I did film an update at the end of March. No, I didn't film an update. I filmed the cutaways from my March update, but I never got a chance to film this bit. So you're getting, I did the intro in February and you're getting both my March and April updates in this video. So updates one and two in one video. So yeah, let's get on into them. The first product that I have is not one that I actually have to hold up and show you because I have left it on my desk and work very helpfully and that is my Origins Facial Spray. I do know how much I've used and I used quite a decent amount between the intro and update one. Usage between update one and update two has been dreadful. I don't know, probably because I didn't get to film this bit, I think I was hanging off on using things between update one and two so that if I was holding it up it wasn't like completely different to how it had been at the, the cutaway part when I'd filmed the cutaways. I think that kind of held me up a little bit between updates one and two. Good progress intro to update one, bad progress update one to update two. So definitely one that I need to step it up with a bit before update number three. The next item that I'll talk about is my Red Ken Anti Snap. So this is like a blow drying product. So yeah, I'm going to be honest, when I put this in, I was hoping I might finish it within the project. But as you can see, I used it a little bit more between the intro and update one. Although I do also think the bottle kind of gets narrower towards the top. So maybe the way that it's come down is more reflective of the narrower top than it is the actual amount of product used versus between update one and update two where the horizontal line has moved down less. Either way, I don't think I'm going to finish this within the year, which is a bit annoying because I was really, really hoping to get this out. I don't, I like using it, I don't mind having it, but if you watch my hair care inventory video, you'll know I have quite a lot of blow dry balm products. I have got very fine hair that gets weighed down really easily, so I don't like using too much product in it. So I feel like if I'm using this, I'm not using those, it's kind of one or the other for sort of creams and balms to put in when my hair is wet. And I feel like, yeah, this is definitely going to hinder me using those and I also don't think I'm going to knock this out within the year, judging by the usage. So, a bit disappointed, but do you know what? I'm using it more than I would have if I hadn't put it in the project. So, I'm still making progress into the hair care inventory and it is, of all my inventories, it's the least kind of problematic one, it's the least overcrowded. So I can probably afford a bit of a slower move on those, but I would have definitely liked a slightly faster move. But I don't, I'm obviously if I overuse it, I'm just gonna weigh, weigh my hair down and not like the way my hair looks. So I just need to use it in the way that feels natural, whilst also knowing that I'm forcing myself to reach for this in a way that I wouldn't be reaching for this consistently if it wasn't in the project. So I'm still glad I put it in, but yeah, that's, if that's two months, this, this bottle is not being finished within the year, which is a bit gutting. Moving on to my perfume, which I obviously mark on the side. Really good progress both months, really happy with this, not remotely worried. Definitely will be able to finish this within the project, no bother at all. It's the Montgir Lan perfume. It's pretty inoffensive, I've just been wearing it in work. I definitely like to rotate my perfumes rather than panning them, but this is really old in my collection, so I do still want to get the use of it before it goes off. So I'm glad I'm getting that use, even if it is slightly to the detriment of various other perfumes, but it's fine. It's fine for work every day. It's fine. Going hand in hand with that is my Mon Guerlain Shower Gel. So this has come down uh, pretty much the same between the intro and update one and update two. So yeah, I think if it comes down that much every single month, I'll definitely finish this within the project. So I'm not too worried about it. The only thing is I feel like it's such a special shower gel, which is why it's been in my collection for so long, because I've like rationed the usage of it. And then I've been getting through the perfume by wearing it at work. And this feels like a ridiculous shower gel to use like in the morning to go to work for the day. You know, it feels like such a special product that I should be using it at the weekends. 
but the way I've been kind of using the perfume is that if I use that in work I've been wearing what I want at the weekend so a little bit kind of like counterproductive in that sense but the main thing is I'm using it. Not a very exciting one to update you on is my blush so we have a usage goal in place here. I'm aiming to use this 100 times within the project. By update 1 I had used it 8 times and by update 2 I had used it 11 times, 11 times that month. So 19 uses in total. However, this is a massive pan. I'm not even sure that within 100 uses this is going to look all that different for you guys. But yeah, I have been enjoying using it. I've used it today. I think it's a really, really pretty one. I'm really liking using it and I'm, I'm glad to be getting the use out of it. But yeah, I'm not even convinced that 100 uses is going to make a massive dip into this huge pan. So... I don't know if it'll ever be very interesting for you guys to look at, but 19 uses down and 81 to go. One that is far more interesting, I think this is going to be my like favourite product of the project in terms of just the visual difference is my highlight. This did have a pan in it when we opened because I'd had this in a previous project pan so it had a pan in the middle and then I kind of widened that pan or like kind of heightened it by update one but by update two I really cleaned off the top of this. You'll see it better in the cutaways but I am so proud of how this is looking. The bottom part I've really not touched at all like I definitely concentrated on the top part to get the pan the first time and now I've kind of cleaned off the top part so I don't know whether to go to the bottom where it's basically like completely as kind of tall as it can be. Start trying to kind of go down into that powder there or whether to work the sides which are maybe a bit easier to clean off and then leave myself the bottom for the end of the project. But I feel like the bottom is going to be where the work is. By the next update I could clean off one side and then the update after I could clean the other. But like the bottom is that's where the bulk of the product is so I don't know whether to actually go to that and try and clean or like start making progress into that first so that I leave myself like the easier bits for the end. What do you guys think? Let me know uh, but yeah I am really really pleased. This is definitely visually the most satisfying item in the project so far. To jump from the most satisfying to the least satisfying and I did say when I put this in that I thought it would be so. This is the Lisa Eldridge Lip Gloss in the shade Ribbon. I have been using this but as you can see I've not even remarked this since the intro. The product doesn't look to be coming down at all. There's no windowing. I can't see through it even when I hold it up to the window. So this is like super thick, super pigmented. I do use it once a day but even now that we're at the end of April so if I started using this kind of properly in February like two months say that's 60 days roughly absolutely no movement at all as far as I can tell so even if I say that's once a day that's 60 uses because I, I use this at night basically yeah no movement at all so we'll see we'll see if we ever get movement in this but right now nothing to report unfortunately my Armani foundation. I actually seem to have forgot to take a cutaway for this for update one so you're going straight from the intro to update two in terms of cutaways. It's really hard to show you this because like you can't mark the outside of the jar or anything but there is definitely significantly less product in here than there was at the beginning so I hope you can kind of see that in the cutaways. In terms of the usage I used it three times between the intro and update one which is not very much, but I used it nine times between update one and update two. So we're at 12 uses altogether. I'm not sure like how many uses it's going to take to finish it. Finishing this is my goal because again, it's one of the older products in my collection, but it was very expensive. So I would like to get the use out of it. And it still seems to be fine and everything. I don't think it's going off or anything like that. But obviously because it is a jar, like you're letting in loads of oxygen every time you open it. 
so I'm probably really lucky that it's not gone off. Definitely just trying to get the use of it, finish it up before it goes off. I do like it, I think it's really nice in the skin. I hate the pack, the, the reason this has been in my collection for as long as it has done is because the packaging is so cumbersome, it's not travel friendly, it's it's such a pain like to actually, you know, you can't just pump it onto a brush and go, it's like you need to take the lid off and dip the brush or the sponge in and you need to like find somewhere to rest that while she close it and I know that sounds so silly but it's just those little things that make it more cumbersome. I also can't store it in the drawer with my other foundations so I tend to open the drawer or when I wasn't using this I was just opening the drawer to pick a foundation out whereas this would sit on the top but my eyes would be in the foundation drawer so I would never look at this either. So this really is a, a packaging error, is why this has been in my collection as long as it has done. Because the actual product is nice, I like how it looks on my skin. I hate the fact it's in a jar, it's so messy, it's so cumbersome. I won't repurchase it even though I like it, but I definitely would like to finish it in the project. And I do think, like, looking at how much product is left now, um, I do think that's going to be doable. So, fingers crossed, we'll finish this by the end of the year, along with a whole load of other foundations ideally, because in some moment of madness at the start of this year, I decided to set a goal of finishing nine foundations in the year, even though I tried to pan a foundation all year last year and didn't actually finish it within the year. I don't know what I was thinking about, but that's the goal I've set myself, so we're gonna try and see it through. So hopefully that foundation will be one of those, plus another eight. Easy task that I've set myself. Don't know what I was thinking, but here we are. And the last two products are the products that I am weighing. So first of all, my concealer is the Kiehl's Clearly Corrective Dark Circle Perfector. At the opening, this was 19 grams. By update one, it was down to 18 grams. Now, I felt that was a little bit off. I thought I'd used it fairly consistently. I felt like I'd used more than a gram of product, but scale said what scale said. Um, however, I have measured it for this update and we're down to 15 grams, so quite a significant jump between update 1 and 2, so I don't really know what's going on there because I don't feel that I used it significantly more, um, but obviously I must have done. But either way, we're down to 15 grams and that includes the packaging, so I'm kind of hoping that there can't be that much more left to use in this. It is very watery, so that's probably a bit of a futile hope. I'm not loving this, I'm going to be honest, finding it pills on me a little bit. It's just something that I'm using at work, kind of, you know, no makeup days, just if I don't want to put anything else on, but I'm putting this around my eyes and maybe a little bit, kind of spreading it across my face a little bit, just to lift the complexion a little bit and even it out. Um, so yeah, it's, I don't love it, but I don't hate it enough to just declutter it. I, I want to get the use out of it for my project pan and also for my empties. So we'll persevere, but hoping that it'll be done quite quickly now. And the last product is my Beauty Pie foot cream. So at the intro, this was 56 grams. By update one, I used six grams. I got it down to 50. And by update two, I got it down by another one gram, down to 49 grams. So I think I used it once. I'm going to be honest, what's going on here is that I really need to do a foot peel. So if you guys have been with me for a while, you know I'm a big fan of a chemical foot peel. I will just show you one. So the likes of this, you get like the two little boots, which you become empty. Then you get the sachet of the actual product. You pour that into the boots and then you put them on your feet, basically. What then happens is that over the next fortnight, your feet peel and you're left with like baby soft new feet. They are wonderful, they are great, but your feet peel in a very dramatic visual way. And basically I have had just quite a lot going on um, over the start of the year when I've been like a little bit more dressed up and I've been wearing nicer shoes that expose my feet more. I've been making a big effort to like wear more of my high heels and things. So it's a bit different during the kind of, usually during winter, this is not so much of an issue because I'm wearing boots a lot. When you're wearing boots and trainers, you don't see it. But when you're wearing like a heel, you see the skin. Um, and it does, it peel, I mean, most of the peeling comes from the soles of your feet where the harder skin is. 
but it does tend to kind of show a texture on the top of your foot as well during the two weeks that it's peeling. When your feet are actively peeling, like there's no nice way to say this, if I'm wearing boots and socks and whatever during the day in winter and I take them off, I have to take my socks off like over the bin because the, the, the peel is happening over the two weeks so like your skin is literally sh shedding as you walk about. So if you're wearing shoes, like nice shoes without socks that don't maybe come up that high at the side or whatever, I just have a vision of a bit of the skin coming off the sole of my foot into the shoe and it's working its way and like sticking out the side of my heel or something, you know what I'm saying? It's just not really, it's not really the visual. Um, but also because my feet are needing a bit of a peel, it feels like such a waste to be using foot cream on top of skin that I'm like, this needs to come off, you know? Such a ridiculous conundrum. So yeah, I've got things on the next two weekends, then I've got one weekend free, then I'm going to London. I definitely like to get a foot peel in before I go to London, so I'm gonna need to try and plan it in at some point. It's just, basically there's just no appropriate time, but we're just gonna have to make it work. But once I get that done, I will definitely step up using the foot cream a little bit more so I'm not too worried sorry that was a very long-winded story but it is what it is but yeah once I've done that I'm not too worried I think it'll be fine fingers crossed that is everything for today's update so thank you very much for watching it I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you in my next video bye